The forward face of the spacer is machined to form a gap at the mating surface with the second stage wheel for cooling functions. The third wheel carries the buckets of the third turbine stage. 92 buckets are also installed on the third wheel. Third stage buckets are not internally cooled. Third stage bucket tip is also enclosed by a shroud. Buckets are attached to the wheel by the dovetail arrangement and held on the axial direction by twist locks arrangement like the second stage. The aft wheel shaft is machined to provide the following features. Journal surface for bearing number three and surfaces for oil and air seals. Aft balancing groove. Aft flange to connect the turbine rotor to the generator rotor. The turbine rotor must be maintained at reasonable operating temperature to assure a longer turbine service life. For this purpose, bucket vanes are not directly attached to the dovetail. Instead, they are connected to their dovetails by means of shanks. These shanks locate the bucket to wheel attachment at a significant distance from the hot gases. Combined with the diaphragm segments, this arrangement isolates the rotor away from the hot gases flow. Seals from the first stage nozzle support ring mate with sealing wings extruding from the forward side of the first stage bucket shank. Also, seals from both sides of each diaphragm mate with sealing wings from both sides of each bucket. The seal from the exhaust frame mates with the sealing wing on the aft side of the third stage bucket at the forward end of the inner barrel. The first stage aft wheel space is cooled by the compressor discharge air supplied through the second stage nozzle. The second stage forward wheel space is cooled by a portion of the first stage aft wheel space cooling air, which passes through the labyrinth and brush seal. The second stage aft wheel space is cooled by the rotor internal cooling air, which passes through the slots on the forward face of the second wheel spacer. The third stage forward wheel space is cooled by a portion of the second stage aft wheel space cooling air, which passes through the labyrinth seal. The third stage aft wheel space obtains the cooling air from the exhaust frame cooling system. The rotor internal extraction cooling air is utilized for bucket and wheel space cooling. This airflow also maintains the parts of the rotor at approximately compressor discharge temperature. This ensures longer service life for turbine rotor parts. For efficient gas turbine operation, clearances between all rotating and stator parts should be tight as possible. As the turbine shell controls the radial and axial position of all turbine stator parts, the shell should be isolated from the high temperature of the enclosed hot gases. This will ensure the control of the shell diameter and roundness to be maintained. The heat transfer from hot gases is reduced by the following means. Hollow shroud blocks provide high thermal resistance between the hot gases and the turbine shell. The first stage shrouds are cooled by the compressor discharge air. The third stage shrouds are cooled by cooling air from the cooling and sealing system. This air is extracted from the compressor fifth stage and supplied to the third stage shrouds through six holes machined on the turbine shell. Combined with the assembly of the nozzles between shrouds, hot gases are kept away from the shell. Heat transfer from the nozzle segments to the shell is reduced by means of insulation packages. The external surface of the turbine shell incorporates cooling air passages. Cooling air is supplied from the exhaust frame cooling circuit. To control the amount of airflow, multiple metering orifices are installed on the flow passages. The exhaust assembly consists of two parts, the exhaust frame and the exhaust diffuser. 
The exhaust frame consists of inner and outer cylinders connected together by 10 radial struts. The inner cylinder supports bearing number 3. The lower part of the outer cylinder features mounting points for the turbine aft legs and the jib key. The inner side of the exhaust frame parts is covered by the inner and outer diffuser. The outer diffuser surface is manufactured to provide divergent cross-sectional area to increase the exhaust gas's pressure. The struts are covered by airfoil-shaped fairing surfaces. The inner and outer diffuser and the airfoil-shaped fairing surfaces are metal surfaces which protect the exhaust frame parts from being exposed to the high temperatures of exhaust gases to maintain temperature stability. This stability is required to keep the exhaust frame inner cylinder, which carries the bearing number 3, in the accurate position, avoiding any misalignment. To ensure the temperature stability, air is forced by means of two off-base blowers between the exhaust frame outer cylinder and the exhaust frame diffuser surface through four ports. A portion of this air goes to the cooling holes around the turbine shell, and the remaining air flows between the struts and its outer airfoil-shaped fairing surface. Then, cooling air exits in two directions, to the third stage aft wheel space and to the inside of the inner cylinder around bearing number three to protect the instrumentation in this area from being exposed to high temperatures. The portion of the exhaust frame inside the exhaust plenum, which is exposed to exhaust gases, is covered by insulation packs to reduce heat transfer. The exhaust diffuser is located at the extreme aft end of the gas turbine bolted to the exhaust frame. The exhaust diffuser is a fabricated assembly consisting of inner cylinder and outer divergent cylinder. This divergent configuration reduces the exhaust gas's velocity and increases its pressure. At the aft end of the diffuser, five turning vanes direct gases from the axial to the radial direction into the exhaust plenum. The inner side of the inner cylinder is isolated by insulation packs to reduce the heat transferred to the load coupling tunnel and to the bearing number three area. The gas turbine rotor is supported by three bearings. These bearings hold the rotor in the radial direction by journal bearings and in the axial direction by thrust bearings. Bearing 1 is located in the center of the compressor inlet casing and held in place by straps. The bearing components are installed inside the bearing housing, which consists of the lower and the upper halves. This bearing contains an elliptical journal bearing, loaded thrust bearing, and unloaded thrust bearing. Labyrinth seals are installed at each end of the housing, where oil control is required. Their teeth run against smooth surfaces machined on the rotor. Seals are assembled so that a small clearance exists between the seals and the shaft. The sealing airflow from the cooling and sealing system through the axial tube machined at the right side of the housing and is admitted to the labyrinth seals through two ports to annular spaces surrounding the seals. Between the two rows of seal teeth, sealing air is admitted through multiple radial holes to stop oil from spreading along the shaft. Some of this air returns with the lube oil 
and is vented through the lube oil mist eliminator, and some escapes out of the housing. Inboard of the main pressurized seals, two backup labyrinth seals are installed for positive sealing. A floating seal is installed on the forward of the thrust bearing cavity to contain the oil 